Hello everyone, in this uh, tutorial I'm going to go into uh, uh, texture mapping and uh, the difference between uh, 2D texture and uh, 3D texture. So for that I am um, going to use the, the brick uh, example that I uh, made in my last tutorial. It's uh, exactly the same and I also made a 3D texture. Uh, you can do this, that by uh, creating a new texture and choosing the th uh, procedural 3D, 3D texture. And it uh, is also exactly the same. I just copied everything from the 2D texture into the 3D texture. And as you can see, that generates uh, also a brick-like texture, but it has some strange uh, artifacts in there, if you will. So I'm going to explain uh, what it does. In fact, I'm going to explain it right now. Um, I can't view it in a cube, unfortunately. But uh, um, in the introduction to the procedural textures that I made, um, I explained how um, these functions <coughs> uh, generate um, uh, a pattern. So for instance, if you have an uh, XY plane here, then uh, for a certain coordinate, the function gives a certain value. And with that, you can create patterns. Uh, however, in a 3D texture, uh, it's not only a, a 2D surface with 2D coordinates, but it's three dimensional. So um, it uses three dimensional coordinates. So rather than um, this being a, a surface, yeah, a pattern on the surface of an object, this is more like a volume. Uh, yes, yeah, so a volume, and where the surface of the mesh intersects that volume, you get to see a texture. And that's the way I uh, tend to look at it. Um, so. That can be very handy, uh, as we will see in, uh, in a moment. However, sometimes it uh, creates undesirable uh, results, like for instance here, you can't... Well, of course, this looks a bit funky with um, the circles and that stuff, and I'm going to explain uh, why that is. Okay. Um, in my scene here, I have three objects, and I'm going to apply first the 2D texture to it to show you what's happening. If you select the object, go to set texture and material. <coughs> I'm going to select the 2D texture and I'm going to hit edit mapping. Just making this a little bit bigger so you can maybe see what's going on. Alright, so here we have our brick cube. And as you can see, here here you can see the very obvious di difference between a 2D texture and a 3D texture. The 2D texture simply is one uh, two-dimensional surface, and uh, as you can see here, this gets smeared out because it has no information for what's going on in here. <coughs> and for a cube, um, what you um, what you could do is use uh, UV mapping or something to uh, make it uh, show up good. Uh, I'm not going to go into that right now. It's more like um, um, it has something to something to do more with um, uh, game models for games, and I'm going to do that uh, later. <coughs> later on. So uh, for now we'll uh, leave it at that um, for the cube, for this 2D texture. Um, these settings of course uh, let you scale the texture on your model and rotate and move it around and stuff. So yes, this just creates only on this surface and on the back surface and texture. All right. <coughs> now for the cylinder. Let's 
select the 2D texture again and at first glance this uh, seems to be co uh, okay however it's still a pro projection it, the texture is by pro projecting from this view onto the surface and then if you rotate it you can see that uh, the texture gets stretched and then the, the back side is also uh, uh, has a pro projection on it um, uh, but what we can do in this case, because it is a cylindrical object, we can uh, use a different coordinating system, namely the cylindrical coordinating system, which allows you to uh, <coughs> combat the stretching of the texture. This uh, looks, of course, a little bit, a little bit strange. That's because the scaling is a little bit off. And uh, uh, just a little explanation of how these cylindrical coordinates work. Uh, you have a circle on the top, and uh, you can um, put in a value of the angle here that it makes, like a uh, unit circle if you're into mathematics. And you have here the height of the texture. So uh, you can put this value down a little bit, like 90 or something and as you can see there are lots of bricks here and they're all evenly radially distributed um, I'm going for a little bit higher value and I'm going to lower the scale now, I'm, high, I'm making it higher like that, ok and as you can see the smearing is uh, the stretching of the texture is now gone. So this is what cylindrical coordinates can do. <coughs> Alright, now for the sphere. Alright, here we have the same issue course because it's, it's uh, pro pro uh, projected onto this side this area here gets stretched and doesn't look very good so for that we have spherical coordinates it's the same concept as um, cylindrical coordinates it uses um, yeah, spherical coordinates so uh, if you're into mathematics you will you might know what uh, that means it is also um, uh, composed of an angle around one uh, circle and the angle, uh, another angle on a certain axis. I'm not explaining it very well, but uh, the coordinates are composed of the of two angles and uh, a radius. And in this case, the radius doesn't matter. So, yeah, you can again scale this down a little bit, scale this down maybe, but not in this case, it seems to be good. So, yeah, now we have our sphere nicely uh, textured with a 2D texture. Alright. Now, um, for the 3D texture, I'm going to show you how that looks. Oh, hold on. Alright. So, the only mapping available here is linear. And that's also a little bit of a drawback uh, when it comes to cylindrical and spherical objects. But for rectangular objects like this one, let's scale it uh, to the object. Here we have our cube with the texture on it. And as you can see, uh, it also 
generates a pattern in the 3D space. So it's not only pr projected on one, onto one side and the back side, but also uh, it works in depth as well. And let's say that we uh, move this up a little bit. You can see that it also on this face generates a pattern. Um, you can see here a little artifact that's because <coughs> of the um, displacement and as you can see it is prying apart the um, the edges here. What you can do to combat this is uh, to make a, a poly mesh and uh, subdividing it and smoothing it so that the edge has a little bit of smoothness. I believe that uh, helps a little bit. I can uh, show you that now. Let's uh, hide this cube. I have a polymesh cube here. It's a little bit uh, rounded off with the edges. There you go. This is the cube that I made. Okay. Let's select the 3D texture again. Scale to the object. Let's move it up. So you can see the pattern at the top as well. So as you can see now, there's no uh, edge here anymore. One other thing that you might notice is that it's uh, considerably slower this time. That's okay. Okay, so here is our um, object with the 3D texture. And it's looking uh, quite nice, if I may say so myself. Okay. Um, however, a 3D texture is not always uh, uh, the best thing to have when you are uh, you have cylindrical and spherical objects and I'm going to show you show you that. Let's also scale this. Alright, let's look around this object. As you can see the pattern is uh, a little bit weird. It uh, doesn't follow the um, you know the normal pattern that we saw when we um, use the cylindrical mapping with the 2D texture and that's because you can imagine um, it like an infinite volume in uh, space that's invisible but only where this line intersects this surface intersects that volume you get uh, a texture showing up so um, what you have now is like um, a pattern that is uh, that has bricks that's uh, rectangular in shape, the, the pattern that is, and you have a circle in the middle of that. So some bricks will be uh, shorter because of that, and uh, it's it's maybe a little bit diff difficult to imagine that, but um, that's what it produces. So. Uh, in this case it doesn't look that bad because it, um, it gives a more like a random feel to it uh, with our brick texture. It's not uh, that evenly distributed and stuff and uh, some bricks are smaller. So in this case it works out uh, pretty okay I think. Alright now for the sphere. And you could uh, already see that um, what's happening in the preview uh, we have the same ef uh, effect here because um, the pattern itself is uh, 
you see now the 3D space and uh, this is a spherical surface and that creates uh, it uh, intersects the brick pattern in, uh, in this way so you get uh, very strangely shaped bricks so in this case it doesn't turn out that great I think because you know who has bricks that look, uh, look like this it's a little bit uh, weird but uh, anyway uh, one big advantage for um, 3D textures is of course that you don't have to worry about uh, um, mapping mapping it for instance if you have this cube uh, you won't have to worry about uh, the other faces that need to, to be mapped so for instance with the UV mapping or uh, with different pr projections, what you can do with the cube is uh, you can have one texture uh, mapping for one uh, uh, for one projection, and then have another uh, mapping for one for the other direction and stuff. And I may show you that in a later tu later tutorial or something. It's one uh, little trick that I sometimes use to uh, texture the things. Alright, so uh, that's, this about wraps up my tutorial. Um, one quick note here uh, is that we also have um, image map texture. And this is also a 2D texture. And you can use images here to uh, make up the texture, like an uh, image pattern. But that uh, also can be done using a 2D or 3D texture and by using the patterns uh, the image pattern here you can select an image here and this allows you to have more control over the image and you can uh, apply mathematical operations to it so I always prefer to use this one over the image map uh, texture this one. Alright, so uh, this uh, concludes my tutorial. Uh, I may uh, do a uh, couple of more examples, like the brick texture, in some later tutorials. So, uh, I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope it was helpful.